do you feel that you have left a legacy? If so, what is it? Well, um, the legacy would be, of course, I, I've done holistic medicine. I'm 71. I've done it for over 40 years. And the biggest uh, legacy would be to urge pe doctors, other doctors, and, and as you probably know, I've been on tons of radio, TV shows, and still not many doctors do dark field microscopy, as you know. And it's, it's really, I, I had a cardiologist, but he wasn't, he had his cardiology degree from another country, okay? And, and um, his name was Tom Dorman, he's passed away, but he didn't have the credentials from America. To, so I need, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a cardiologist or a hematologist. So my studies with blood have to be confirmed in this country because of credentials. Yeah, I don't have the cred. <laughs> so you have to have cre credentials here to impress people. So I'm always trying, I'm always sending my book, and I'm always trying to get other cardiologists impressed. Like, for example, this cardiologist I talked to, the one that passed away, he came in here, oh gosh, 20, more than 20 years ago, and he said that's not, he's a conservative like I'm, so he thought, oh, I'll give him a, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. So he came in and said, basically, prove to me that you're not full of baloney. So he said, everybody, everybody, you, you take their blood and you put it through air, everybody's going to clot. I said, oh, sit here and watch. So he sat and watched and spent three days with me. Imagine, he just gave up three days of his work. And when he left here, he totally was humbled. He went out and bought a microscope. Okay, but, but I mean, we need an American doctor with American credentials because he had a British accent and he was from South Africa. So that was great, but he did not have... So we need an American doctor to, to do the same studies that I did and to prove that one out of three people out of 100 patients that we tested, one out of three people is going around with serious clotting. So you certainly don't want to ever ride a motorcycle on American streets, <laughs> except if you're off in the, the desert or something. Because I'll tell you, there's, there's so many people with excess clotting out there, it's incredible. One out of three. So you're saying that if people just take fish oil, then they that would that's enough for them to... Yeah, we say... It sounds off. It sounds really easy, and it is easy. Just a blood thinner, and you don't have to use fish oil if you're in Hawaii, and if you like bromelain from pineapple. If you you could use lots of magnesium, you you could use ginkgo ginger ginseng if, if the Orientals provide that. You you can use um, uh, cayenne pepper, right? Lots of cayenne pepper, garlic oil. So there's many things that'll break up clots. And, and it's, it's certainly done, or recently, Japanese natto kinase you've heard of, and that's from natto. So there are many relatively cheap anti-clotting agents. And by the way, for the people who like Coumadin, Coumadin has no effect on platelet aggregation, which is clotting. I should sell my book. Dr. Pervatero, we missed your book. Can you show us your book? Yeah, here it is. And, and like I say, it's actually old. It kind of reminds me of Ed Griffin, who wrote about the Federal Reserve. His book is like 20 years old. But now it's popular. Well, clotting should always be popular because this is what kills most people. And when you go to the emergency room with chest pain, they don't test you for clotting. Crazy? Yes. Stupid? Yes, and inexpensive. Good point. Mm -hmm. uh, we charge in Covina forty dollars. I suppose somebody in Beverly Hills is going to charge sixty. You know, but relatively inexpensive test.